Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Sapient Thoughts, where we discuss theophilosophical issues, where we refute those arguments made, those specious arguments that are made by the detractors of Islam, in addition to, of course, presenting a case for the veracity of Islam. Inshallah, today what we're going to be talking about is something which relates to the subject of Quran and embryology and a particular contention which people have, which is that the Quran allegedly says, according to these detractors, that I've seen their material on anti-Islamic websites, that the Quran, uh, that the human being is made up from a congealed clot of blood. And we know from embryological uh, study that that is not the case. And they say the word alaqa, which is the operative word, the important word, it doesn't mean to cling or to be attached to something, which is what many Muslims of today say, which they say is a superimposition of uh, modern scientific jargon into the vocabulary of the Quran. So let's deal with these two contentions one by one. The first thing I'm going to be dealing with, inshallah, is the second thing I've just mentioned, which is the fact that this word alaqa cannot mean uh, something which clings or something which is attached to something else. And that in the vast commentarial tradition and the vast exegetical tradition for 1,400 years, this meaning was unknown to medieval scholars and this meaning was not used in this way to indicate attachment or connection. The truth of the matter is that is false. That, in fact, medieval scholars from the very early days of Islam were mentioning in their treatises, in their dictionaries, and in their exegetical and commentarial works, that in fact, alaqa does mean to be attached to or connected to. So I'll give you one or two examples. Ibn al-Jawzi, he says this, and he was a 6th century scholar. Uh, Al-Asfahani, who uh, has a dictionary talking about the mufradat, of the Quran or the singular words of the Quran, he also mentions that one of the meanings of the word alaqa is something to be attached to sahibuhu, to its companion. So something to be attached to something else, to be connected to it. So this is a specious and uninformed claim, quite frankly. I'm quite surprised, I'll be honest, that these individuals who are making these claims didn't do themselves the academic justice of looking at these medieval uh, books, or they were foolish enough to, to think that we were not going to do that. Indeed, these meanings are there, they are codified, they are written, and they exist. Now, the second contention is they say, well, we, okay, let's give it to you. It could mean to be attached to or connected to something, which will go in line with modern embryonic understanding of the embryo being attached to the uterine wall. And obviously, through umbilical cord and, uh, and others, other things, uh, you know, uh, taking from the nutrients of the host, in this case, the mother. They say, fine, it's, it's in connection with this, but this other uh, thing or meaning is completely unscientific, which is the meaning of uh, a congealed blood, because they say it's not blood at all. Uh, it's not blood. The composition, the chemical composition of the fetus is not a bloody one. It's not one that is composed primarily of blood. And you see, this is where their argument is going to fall flat on its face. Because this, again, is a weakness of the understanding of the Arabic language. And in fact, a weakness of the understanding of the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself said, he said in the hadith that two things have become allowed for us, or two things which are mayit or dead, uh, and two things, and he referred to the word daman, two bloods. The word dam in Arabic means blood. He says two dam, two dams have become uh, uh, allowed for us. And the two dams in particular is the liver, al-kabid, and the spleen. Now, we know that the kabid, the liver, is not something which is composed primarily chemically from blood. But why is it the case 
that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Although some of the, the mufassirs of the hadith or exegetes of the hadith, they say this hadith is mawquf, which goes back to the sahabi. If that is the case, which I don't believe it is from reading the hadith tradition, and I believe it's marfu'a, going back to the Prophet. But even if it is mawquf, it's still what you call is tishhad lughawi. It's still something to be, uh, uh, you can use it as a way in which the language was used. Either way, it doesn't matter. The blood was being in reference in this hadith it was being in reference to something which is not chemically composed of blood, but it looks ready, reddish. So therefore, we can conclude that something which is not blood in chemical composition can yet be referred to as blood if it has the aesthetic appearance of that. And we know that the embryo has the aesthetic appearance of something which is congealed and bloody even though the chemical composition may not be so. Someone may say that the word alaqa shouldn't be treated the same way as the word dem, because dem means blood, and it was being used to refer to something which isn't chemically blood, but it itself is chemically blood. But this would not be applicable to the word alaqa. We would say no, this is not the case because the hadith itself talks about two dead things and two blood things. And the two dead things in question were not actually dead. So this shows that it, the word can be used in the Arabic language to reference aesthetics. So in other words, something might not be the thing, but you're using it to indicate the aesthetic similarity of the thing. Thus, this is a specious claim and a foolish one. The real question is, why use the word alaqa when the Arabs had another word for the word fetus, which actually the Quran uses, which is the word janin, which means fetus. Why did the Quran specify the word alaqa? This is something because, subhanAllah, it's true. It's true the, the fact that the uh, embryo clings onto, is attached, to the uterine wall. So it has this meaning which the word janin does not have. And in fact, the Quran could have said, qit'atun min dam, a congealed clot of blood. But the Quran did not use this phraseology, and indeed, it used a phraseology which is more specific and more in line with our understanding of embryology. And though this fits in with the multi layered approach that we believe in here in Sapiens Institute, which is the idea that the Quran speaks to people in a timeless way people of all times and all places, including us in the 21st century. And that is the reason, wallahu alam, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used this very specific word. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.